Hello and welcome to this look at the basics of Worldographer. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program, and uh, what you see in front of you is just a sample map that I generated, so there was a nice picture uh, at the beginning of the video. But let me go up to File, and this is where you would create your new maps, uh, whether they're World Kingdom, uh, City, Town, Village, or Battle Maps, uh, Dungeon Maps. Um, and then here you have all your other controls for loading and saving and importing and exporting and checking your licenses. We have a pro version, which just uh, unlocks some uh, features that uh, power users would, would want. Things like expanding uh, extra hexes on a, on a map, extra rows and columns of hexes on an existing map, or um, doing our map levels uh, functionality, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. Um, and some other things that, that power users would want. But, you know, 90% of what everybody would want is, is in the basic application without a, a, a license key to unlock the, that extra functionality. It's the same software, the same download regardless. So with that out of the way, let me pull up the uh, new World Kingdom map dialog. And this just gives you some settings for creating a new map. Um, let's take them one by one real quick. Hex orientation, do you want your columns to line up or do you want the rows of hexes to line up? Map projection is either flat, like what you see here, like a traditional map, or we have an icosahedral projection, which is kind of like, imagine unrolling a d20 into, into 20 separate triangles that are all kind of linked. So not really separate, but 20 triangles that are linked. Um, and then we've got hexes wide and high. So this is how large do you want your map to be in, in hexes. Um, and again, like I said, um, this is something that you can't change if you're just using the, the, the free version. Um, however, the size of the hexes, you are always free to change, and, and the initial settings are here uh, for your map. If you are doing, there's some information down here if you're doing uh, different types of maps where you've got the rows lined up, you're going to want to basically switch these two uh, values, or if you are doing our isometric um, icon style. So we've got the classic icons like what you see behind you, or behind here, uh, the hills and forests and all that are there. Um, or we've got this isometric style down here, and that allows you to have more of a civilization computer game-like um, look to your maps. However, that pulls off that uh, isometric look by squishing your hexes. And so this gives you information on values, uh, starting values for your hex sizes. Over here is the generation uh, settings. So if you want all one terrain, you can just have a blank map and you can draw in everything that if you want to, or you can just sketch it in. You can just say, I want, you know, draw in a line of mountains and a circle for your forest over here and another line for where your coastline is, where your sea or whatever, deserts and so on. So you just add in roughly what you want. And then up on our uh, generate menu, there's an option there to um, do, a, or sorry, tools. On tools, there's a run the terrain wizard option, and that will do a nearest neighbor fill for the whole thing. So it will fill everything in, and then you can tweak it from there and change up your terrain. Um, that's also, you know, it's also good to use that if you're just doing um, a, a large amount of uh, one type of terrain, like if you're doing mostly sea, and you've just got some islands, maybe you want to start with uh, all sea terrain. Generate terrain, you can do it two ways. You can create just a region. Um, so here we've got. Um, uh, settings for for the region. Uh, this is just uh, percentages. What's the chance of one type of terrain is adjacent to another type of terrain? Um, and I should mention that uh, this initial view level. I kind of skip past this. Initially, most of the worlds that I most of the maps that I make start with the world level. You can start on a different level, and this is what I alluded to in the beginning. You've got um, uh, options to in the pro version. You can convert or you can make a second map level of your of your map that you've already created so you can say you want six hexes across per hex in the parent map and you can add more detail then you could do that again you can do you can pick i just pick six because that's commonly what people pick a lot of people also pick five but you can pick three you can pick 30 um, whatever you want uh, to kind of get into that level of detail so you can do a a world level a continent level a kingdom level and it's not here for for this because it's not valid for creating a new map but then there's also a province level so you can you can actually go four different levels and you change that and you create those new levels over here with with this drop down once you've got a map created anyway you can also set it up so that it's a full world and like i said that's what i typically do and these are percentages for driving the terrain that, that's going to be created Number of nations, by default, um, Worldographer creates uh, some stub information about your world, which you can ignore if you only want to use it as a map making program, or you can take full advantage of it if you 
um, or want, want to store information about your campaign in Worldographer itself, you can do that. And I'll briefly pull that up in a moment. But you can set this to some other number if you'd prefer. So let's generate a quick map and you'll see that it comes up really quickly. Um, so we can drag this little green box around to kind of show us where we are, where we're looking on the map. And, um, you know, I can see I've got a whole bunch of ocean over here and I've got no ocean over here. Uh, so one of the things, like I said, one of the things that, that we have in the pro version is I can kind of add and shrink columns and rows. So if I don't, if I wanted the, the continent masses to be a little bit more centered, I can say drop four columns on this side and add four columns on this side. Boom. And so this refreshes every half minute or so. So you're not going to see that change immediately there, but, but there we did. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to fill that in. I'll, I'll make that part of the, the tutorial here. That was sort of unplanned, um, but I'm going to make this part of the tutorial and um, you'll, you'll get the advantage of that. Before I get to that, though, up here on the data menu is where that world info uh, can be accessed and edited. Here you can enter in some general information about your world if you want to use this. Um, the generator for this actually starts with cultures where it picks a, a language and then it generates, uses that language to kind of, um, uh, there's some data files uh, for language and generating names from the languages. And so this gives you some stub information that you're free to use or you can regenerate it or you can, uh, uh, um, you know, tweak it and make it match what you have in mind. Um, and then it also will generate based on those cultures, uh, a number of religions. And so you can have and demons sacked in that time in that case monotheistic here you've got mystical and you've got a pantheon with a whole bunch of different gods um, but but back to the nations that's kind of where we were going originally with this with nations you can click on the nations and you can pull up just a couple of bullet points about each of those nations there so that's what that's like <clears throat> all right so next I'm going to talk about these drawers on the side. This is kind of the meat and the potatoes of the program where you're going to be uh, making your maps and you're going to want to be adding terrain and so forth. First thing is layers. Layers is not layers is not something that we had exposed in the program before. In fact, uh, Worldographer is Hexographer too. So, you know, Worldographer has been out for a couple of years now, uh, three, four years. Um, before that, we had Hexographer, which was out for five years or so, maybe six. I can't quite keep track of it all myself. Um, but you get the idea, and uh, we, we, we kind of uh, hid the concept of layers from, from the end user to just simplify the user interface. Some users kind of do want this additional bit of functionality so you can kind of control how things stack up above each other. By default, you know, Worldographer is going to put all of your ter land terrain on this terrain land level. Um, it's going to put all of your terrain water on that level. You've got shapes that get put on below all if you need it there, above water, above terrain. Features go there, labels go there typically. Um, occasionally it'll add additional layers like the, uh, when we run the uh, Generate Nations Empires, it's actually going to add that to a new layer called Borders uh, for those shapes uh, for the borders. Um, vegetation, when you're creating a settlement map, gets added onto a vegetation layer so you can kind of control if it's above or below the, the buildings uh, sort of thing. Or turn them off, turn them on, especially like the borders for the nations you might want to have a, a map that's not, not got any political features on it so you can you can put all those political features on that layer and then and then and then turn it off and then you can also drag these up and down to kind of re, um, move them around add uh, or remove them as necessary okay uh terrain so uh this is our, our terrain drawer this is really the, the, the key thing to the program, the initial thing, the first part that I had written uh, way back with, with Hexographer and when I had the idea to, to make the software. Um, I like to filter by classic when I'm working on the classic uh, terrain or map style. Um, and then you can filter again by another text and I, just from prior use I had left in forest. But if you want to see everything that, 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 that's in there, just delete it, hit enter so it takes effect and you'll see all these different um, different types of terrain that are in here. So what we need, uh, we need to have some water ocean on the side. So we're going to pick that water ocean 
and then I can either just add them one by one, which of course would, would be a little bit tedious. I also have an option here, wide terrain placement, which is actually gonna place um, a, a seven at a time, basically the one you click on in every adjacent line and you can you can drag this. And then so that, that's another way to get this to work. And then finally, we've got a paint bucket. So that'll just match all the, all the terrain that matches that's contiguous. And so we had one more on the side here. So that's how it kind of wrapped around those few that I had here. And so it, it filled in all of those. Now I'm going to take off the paint bucket and I'm going to set it to icy now because I want to touch up the um, terrain up here on the very top because we've got a polar cap and we've got this over here. So that's kind of how, how you pull that off. Um, you can go and, uh, and all of it's the same for all the rest of the terrain buttons here. Just pick the type that you want and click on the map of the hex where you want it to appear or drag either way. A um, couple of other settings that are worth noting uh, or, or, or buttons that are worth noting. So I can select any of the terrain and I can click on it. And it's going to, to change these values here with whatever the settings are for that uh, particular hex that I clicked on. So you have an idea of how plentiful the resources are as a percentage in that, um, in that hex. And that's used by our, our uh, nation generator functionality to kind of find good places for starting cities and then where adjacent cities would, would pop up and that sort of thing. So we also have a make coastline button. So you can click make coastline that you can click on and it will um, add coastlines to things. Uh, of course, to do that for an entire map would be kind of tedious. So if we go up to our generate menu, you can generate coast. And it asks you, hey, do you also want to change the waters uh, from ocean to sea? And I'll say yes, because I like that look and it matches the 80s um, map style. So there we have it. And so it did that for us for the entire map. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to say about the terrain drawer. Uh, we can move on to uh, features here. And uh, features, very similar concept. Again, I'm going to filter by classic just so I exclude some of the other things. Um, but we've got a number of, of features built into the tool. And you can also filter. So if we just want villages, for example, I can half type in the word village and um, all of those will pop up. And then I just click the one I want, drop it on the map where I want it to go. Um, actually, that's set to a larger size than default because of how I was using the program before. So I can just go ahead and say, I don't want to override the def default scale in either dimension. And I also don't want to rotate it because it has slight rotation. So I can hit that there. Now, if I want to rotate, I can also rotate on the map uh, and I can go ahead and just drag this to kind of get it to match, which isn't really important for this style of map, but it is really useful for uh, settlement maps, for example, where you're rotating buildings to line up with a, with a street. Although the generator does that for you, uh, for all the ones that it places on the map automatically. Um, all right, what else uh, to talk about? Notes of selected is good to tell you about. Uh, so we've got this particular village selected. We hit notes of selected. That's going to pull up a dialogue again with randomly generated information from some data files that we've got. And we've done this for many of the icons that are built into the tool, your cities, your villages, like we just saw, your castle, your fort, your ruins, your uh, lighthouse, uh, pyramid, and, and so on. So all the more common things. Uh, we have these set and you can regenerate it if you don't like what's there and it gives you a completely different one so uh, that's that's what that does um, now if you want to see those notes later uh, so that's that's how you have to uh, add a new note that that gets tied into that particular feature um, you can also add notes freely you can just click add view edit note and um, any oh, did i not save i don't think i saved let me go back here notes have selected Oh, I didn't have, I don't have it, um, I don't have it set to be on. So if I hit show note, then I'm going to see a little um, um, yellow box uh, or a box. You can change that color on the dialog as well, which we'll see in a moment here. Um, if I hit add view edit note, that's another way to pull up the note. And again, so like I was saying, we can change that color if you want to color code and put, you know, dangerous things in, in one color and non-dangerous things in another color, for example you can do that and it will change the color for you um, typically you're not going to want to show your players plus it kind of looks a little ugly to have these little little uh, boxes all over the map so I, I typically turn it off until i actually want to see them 
uh, to delete the feature that we just added, uh, you know, you select it and um, and and then you hit delete. Uh, but before I get to that, let me just add um, any changes. If I want to change any of these values over here, um, I, I just select it first and then I can change the values and those those changes um, take effect. Like, for example, here right now we've got place freely on, which means that I can put this particular thing freely anywhere I want. However, if this is off, um, it's going to lock it into the center of a particular hex. So that's um, and that just emulates the style um, of, of of the maps that that, that we're, we're, we've got here. Change the z-axis would you know where things overlap, you can move them up or down. That's what those buttons will do. So select the one that you want to move and and move it up one spot of one thing that's overlapping, down one thing that is overlapping, all the way up to the top, all the way to the bottom. Um, all these things are pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to get into the details with them very much. You can add a label right there. We can put, you know, give the, the city a name and put it right there and it would be tied into that. The feature decoration stuff is kind of cool where I can um, say I want a, a, a box here for this particular feature because that city, uh, 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 all these symbols might represent particular things. Um, hey, maybe this box means that there's a well-guarded tower and an open box means that there's no city tower to it or something, you know, you could also put numbers in there. We could say, hey, this particular one has a, a strength of five for its particular um, town guard. Uh, it might be, you have a strength of five. And so you get a little five at the one o'clock position because that's what this here is. Um, shortened to right right now so that's what you um, you get there um, as I said though we can hit delete to, to delete it and then that removes it off of the map for us um, next thing to show you though is probably the um, nation's empire generator because this relates to the, the features it puts down a number of features for you so um, generate nations and empires and then it's the number of nations that you want to add and since we had 10 when we created this um, map that's the default you can change that do you want to use varied colors this will be a, uh, a rainbow of colors for every 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 country will get a different color border um, and, or you can be all dark red which is what the maps uh, from the 80s had, had used do you want to fill it with a translucency yes or no um, Generally not, uh, but but it is an option if you want to kind of differentiate things a little bit more. Hit OK, and you've got all of these nations put on the map for you. And um, you know you might want to move some things around, like we'll move a label around just so it's not overlapping and sort of that sort of thing. But it gets you a good start. And those are all features, uh, just like the village that we saw. So if we wanted to select one of these things, we can hit select and we can pick it, and then we can. Um, get the notes of this, for example, just like what we did before. Next up, uh, let's talk about the uh, shapes. So uh, shapes are all of your country borders, your coastlines, your rivers. In fact, let's let's generate our rivers too. That's another another cool thing that the generator will do for us and uh, you can pick any number here but uh, just by default it happens to be 10 as well hit 10 uh, hit OK rather and then it just in a moment it, it, it creates your river for you and in general these rivers are going to be flowing downhill it's going to look at that resource information for each terrain that we had seen before and it's going to go downhill now there's you know because a particular hex isn't all a level terrain uh, it does allow for some uh, variance there you know 10 percent difference so it might look like it's going up 10 percent maybe um but you know of course that, that 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 just means that the river is going to the lowest point of of that next hex as it flows down um so these are our shapes tools we can create arcs slash ovals uh, polygons lines curved lines uh, we can and we can select things deselect taper and delete whatever we've got selected uh, let's look at this taper for a moment let's go to select and when we hit select it's going to give us the points for every line that's there on the map so i can i can then click on one of these points roughly and then it highlights that particular one um, now with this, since this is a river, I can taper it, and so it just is going to give me a look that's a little bit more natural, where it's getting wider as it gets down to the mouth of that river, um, and narrower up here at the end. Deselect. Uh, let's do this. Okay. So yeah, that gives you a better better look at it. Um, 
going through all these uh, preset is is something that can save you a little bit of time sometimes these settings aren't quite right for the type of map that you might want to do so you might adjust, you know select one and then adjust it from there um, but for our purposes let's um, you know we can we can show making a, a, a road between a couple of these cities for example in two different ways so here I'm picking a width of um, let's go with 16 this is a percentage of of the hex size that's what that number represents we're doing a very dark 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 gray almost black uh, we could set it to a texture if we want we can configure the textures uh, if we want to add new ones and to change them up uh, change the sizing of them and that sort of thing if it's a polygon or an oval we can do a fill even a line can have a fill where it's going to try to be an open-ended uh, thing but generally you don't want to do that opacity each of the colors um, brings up this file chooser which you can't see the bottom of but just off of the screen of what you can see is a custom color button and then I can pull this up and I can go custom and I can set the opacity of that as well here um, but I can also do an overall opacity for the overall shape here tags are just ways to control kind of what things can be turned you can turn things on and off with that but that's kind of a subject for a more deeper uh, video even though this is a little bit deeper than what I planned to go but sometimes I start talking and I can't stop uh, this this level stuff here th this is the different map levels especially this really only plays uh, or comes into play for your uh, maps of of your worlds and continents and kingdoms uh, where you've got where you can do these different map levels and you can you can say that a particular shape should be on certain levels but not be displayed on other levels same thing applies actually for the features and for your labels you can control that uh, through these similar checkboxes on those drawers level change scale will actually will change the thickness of your lines uh, so that uh, as you go down so if you do a world level map and we've got our, our borders here as you as you create a, a continent kingdom and, and province level map you might be doing a six to one ratio between each of those well that could be then that this this line here becomes 216 times the size of what it is there and you probably don't want that you probably want it to only only get marginally bigger per layer or, or maybe only 50 percent bigger as it goes up in layer for a border um, so you can set that here and you can you can um, reduce how much it grows per each layer uh, layer placement so you by default most of your shapes are going to be on the above terrain layer but if you need to change them to something else if you want to do something different uh, in fact these borders are on a borders layer we're going to check that now because I'm going to show you uh, well <laughs> I'm thinking faster than I'm going let me uh, let me table that idea let me just go back to the lines idea here so you're creating a line uh, just to have a road between these different cities and so I can go ahead and I can have click here and then click here and I, I can you know create a line that's very um, very straight between those some people want that kind of a style for their map and, and that's that's all good um, other times like I can delete this one and other times I want to have something that's kind of a little bit more roundabout you know um, and I can just click a bunch of points and make it look somewhat curved um, and that's good too uh, that's typically how I do them um, but the other thing you can do is you can make a, a, a curved line and what this requires is an initial point two control points and then your next point and then two more control points and then your next point so if I click here for a, a first point and then I click uh, two control points just randomly there and there and then I want to click here as my next point and then let's say that we're going um, we're going down this way actually so I can do another two control points and I click there and then I want to go and I do two more control points and I click there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that look nice and smooth by playing with those control points and I have this help text right here for these um, uh, alt click control click or I mean control drag shift click that sort of thing so shift click will delete alt click will add a point into the middle of a segment and then control uh, drag will move it so I want to control drag a bunch of these points here to kind of give myself a more um, you know a nicer bend maybe to yeah see how that works so I can give everything a, a nice a nice look if you want to uh, again you can you can do this any of those three ways all are valid all will make you know pretty maps just depending on how you how you like to do that 
So that's uh, that's that. I'm going to go back to select. Uh, so uh, and I'm going to select our uh, border here because I'm going to show you something cool uh, here. Just as I'm going down this list, though, uh, GM only, so you can set some objects to be GM only so the, the user can't uh, see it. Uh, so if you want to make a player's version of your map, you can then turn off your GM only objects with the checkbox over here. Um, and there's also a fog of war functionality, which we'll talk about briefly on one of the other drawers. Snap points to grid. So what this will do is as you're drawing a line, it's going to snap uh, those points to either the hex corners uh, or a quarter of the way across, halfway across, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, just so that you, that was, uh, that's one way that you can draw these uh, borders. You can, you can keep snaps, uh, snap uh, points to grid on, and then you're able to kind of draw your borders. However, you can also draw them by doing this add tile border to polygon checkbox. And if that's checked, then I can check on any hex and it's going to figure out the points for that hex to include it in the hex, in the um, shape that you've already got selected. So I can keep doing this. Um, now that doesn't work if you've got a, a hole, uh, you know, you're not able to kind of put something in the middle uh, and, 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 and you know, you're going to get some strange results if you do that. But you can also remove things along the border. So those ones that we just added, if I don't think that they would care about the desert, they don't want to they don't want to own the desert or there's some barbarian tribes in the actual desert and then that's not part of the kingdom we can remove them that way too line cap and join these are just uh, different ways to that your lines will get merged uh, or the end end bits of the lines uh, they can just make things look a little prettier if you play with those a little bit arc options so if you've got an oval or a um, or, or, or circle or half circle or whatever um, this is how you can set it up to be only a part par, par, partial circle um, and then what do you do with that open space with that with that unclosed space how do you close that off um, that's what the, those are options are for we already talked about the z-axis stuff uh, for the features uh, so this is just the same drop shadow inner shadow box blur these are things that i typically use for the battle mats to, to for for your walls you might want to have a bit of a drop shadow to kind of pull off a, a more uh, a, a more artistic effect um, one important note though that that does if you the more drop shadows and such that you add the longer your redraw time comes to the point where once you've got you know I don't know if it's five big ones or 18 small areas that have drop shadows I don't know what the exact uh, numbers would be but eventually it will, it will start to slow to a crawl for your redrawing so you can actually do a global hey turn off those shadows stuff here uh, with this checkbox and uh, that'll turn it all off for you and then you can turn it back on once you're done making your edits and want to actually export a pretty version of the map uh, so that covers pretty much all the options there i think that um, that gives you a good idea of of what's going on and hopefully the explanation of the features drawer carries over to some stuff on the shapes drawer uh, labels uh, though also should carry over from from some of the other other ones um, we can uh, create a new text label for example and set it up to have whatever style uh, we want for the font settings and so forth now you can say that there's no 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 style that you want that you want to use a custom style for this thing and then you would be using all of these controls over here to set up the size and font and colors and so on um, but the advantage of making it a style is that then you can pull up this configure box here, this dialog, and then you can change it. You know, so if you get into making your maps and you're like, oh, I really hate that font, um, then you can you can change the, the, the font around and uh, then it will change it everywhere on the map for you once you apply those changes. Uh, so yeah, I can I can take this river for example, and I can I can put this here, and uh, it was already rotated because of the last time that I was working with the map, and that's also why it said a river. It was just saving the last thing that I did. Actually, that that's a good pro tip. Uh, pro tip is that if you um, uh, are making another line of a particular type, and you've got one already on the map, uh, select the prior one, and then it's going to get all of those shape settings on the shapes drawer to match up with that, um, and then start your you know click new new shape or you know new line, new polygon, whatever it is that you're making, and then start drawing because then it's going to carry all over all of those shapes. So likewise, since I was last editing the uh, uh, changing a text label for a prior trial of this demo, I had typed in a river, so that's why it said a river before, and that's why it was rotated a certain certain way. 
Um, but here you can rotate on the map here itself. Um, these uh, corners would, would allow me to expand the label. And in fact, that's, that's also true with the, um, with the features. Uh, you can, you'll see these corners. And if the checkboxes, let me go back to features for a moment. If these checkboxes for overriding the scales um, are, are checked, then you're able to, um, to, to resize it on the, on the map. Whether and you can either use those little uh, fields on that, on that dialog there, or you can um, actually twist and, and pull these uh, to rotate and to, to resize your, your uh, feature or your label in this case. So that's, uh, that's, and then so we can likewise, we can deselect and we can select this one. So say, um, when you select this one, yeah, when you select this one here, just go over and click on it and then pull it out because you don't want it to be overlapping that particular city. Um, in fact, I mean, if I was really being specific, I would say, oh, you know, I probably went too dark on this particular shape. So let me just pull up this, sh th this shape here and let's, um, you know, maybe not go quite so dark so that you can differentiate it from the, uh, from those city icons, that sort of thing. Anyway, getting into the weeds there, but it was just something that was bothering me. Um, yeah, so I think that covers pretty much everything that you need to know about the, the labels. Uh, just go ahead and pick a style when you can, uh, click, uh, you know, type it in and click on the map where you want it to be centered, and then you can select it and drag it around to kind of um, shift it a little bit if you need to. Fog of War, not going to get into the details of this, already running long on this video, but you can select an area of the map by clicking this button, and then you can say, um, actually hide everything but that selected area because you want the, the, the players to explore the rest of the map. You don't want them to know it, and you're screen sharing. Maybe you've got a, a Discord uh, open, and you're screen sharing the, the Worldographer. This is a way for you to kind of use Worldographer as your uh, poor man's tabletop, if you will, virtual tabletop, if you want. And then you can select again a new area and then you can show that selected area or hide it if you revealed too much, for example. Um, and then trace underlay is some functionality that you can use to, if you've got an existing map that you've scanned in or found online and you want to make a, a new version of it in, in Worldographer, you can select the file and then it'll be placed under the uh, map and you can set the opacity uh, of, of this map that you're editing so you can kind of see both and you can play with that and turn it up and turn it down as you need to. So that's uh, that's what that is. And then this just allows you to resize that map and make it larger or smaller as, as, as you need to, uh, to to kind of get it to match up with whatever grid you're going for. So that covers all that. Just uh, these bottom options used to be on a view options drawer, um, but then we, we switched it to have it down here on the bottom because oftentimes uh, people would be editing and they'd be you know adding their features, but they'd want to be checking these boxes. And it didn't make sense for you have to close the one drawer, make that change, and then reopen the other drawer. It just became a little cumbersome. And I thought that, hey, we can just put it on the very bottom, just one line. Um, generally, most UIs, most screen sizes can fit this and more into one line. Um, we already talked about the view edit, edit note and the show button for that. GM only, we talked about briefly um, for, for that. Uh, red glow, that will just be a way for you to, to show which objects are GM only. There'll be a little red glow around it so you know as the GM. Feature labels, uh, that's what these are here. If there's a label that's tied to the feature, um, you can turn them on and off. And there's a little bit of a bug there where it's on initially, even if that is not checked. Uh, so if I check it and then uncheck it, it'll go away. But you know, in this case for these, I like them on. Hide uh, objects with tags. So tags are that thing that we saw with the shapes and features and so forth where you can put in some text um, about it, what are the rivers, and then you can hide and show the, these types of objects based on the names. Grid, uh, so this is the, the hex grid. One of the questions we get is, how do I configure the, the, the grid? Well, here's how you do it. You go up here and um, here's the uh, controls for the thickness and the color. And what we mean here by current levels tile grid and one level higher tile, tile, one level hires grid is when you're looking at the continent level, um, that would be this this first uh, pair of options when you're and uh, for the main grid, and then you can have another grid um, for the upper uh, upper level, um, which is a little bit thicker, or you could change the color if you wanted to. 
and so on. Um, if you've only got one map layer where you're just doing a world map or you're just doing a kingdom level map and that's all you've got, um, it's only going to use this thing here. Likewise, if you're doing a settlement or a, a battle mat, it's also just going to use this here. Um, although actually battle mat might you be using your square grid controls over here. And you, so you could actually have um, hexes and squares as a way to, you know, you could see that it's not really not really a common use case to show both at the same time, but 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 it's possible. Or either, um, you could do you could do squares on this map if you wanted to. Um, okay, so that covers that for the most part, or at least a brief look at it. Numbers, you can also add numbers to uh, each hex. You can configure that here, where we give you some control over hey, where what number start do you start with, and how much padding do you go with it for the number of digits? Do you want your um, numbers in the bottom of the hex the top of the hex what font do you want all that's there cancel okay um and then uh the drop shadows we already mentioned so that covers all of that um i think our next thing to do then is to show you quickly another type of map so let's pull up a city town village map let's do this in this case uh all of this information over here we've already explained in the prior discussion Um, over here is how I would set up a new map. Now you can create a blank map and then you can you can hand place everything about your city or village um, and, and that's perfectly fine. Or uh, the way that I actually like to do it the most is to start with a blank map, not worry about the rest of these things here, and then in the generate menu there's new options that roughly correspond to these things like to create a coastline. I can generate a coastline and I can give it a clock position for where the coastline should be in and end. Uh, same thing for the river, the main roads. Um, uh, all of these things would have the same sort of sort of thing. Uh, hopefully, this is mostly self-explanatory, except for the fact that uh, some people do get confused about what the clock clock numbers mean, and so that just means, like in this case, if we check has coast, we're going to have a coastline from the twelve o'clock position, so basically the very center top of the map, to the five o'clock position, so you know over to the to the uh, right hand side towards the bottom, kind of. Um, is where that's going to go. So there'll be a coastline spanning from that that point to that to the to the second point. Um, your your city center is where these two main roads will meet, and um, I'm just going to make it so that they're kind of a little bit more even. I'm also going to make this road two perpendicular, so I don't have to bother setting these other two. So this is going to go straight across the map from the two o'clock position to the eight o'clock position. Um, so it's not really straight across, but it's at a diagonal. But it is a roughly straight line. There is a little bit of windiness to it. Um, another key point to point out is that we've got um, street layout. So you can have a, um, it can randomly pick any of these other four, um, or you can go ordered or very ordered, which are going to give you kind of a street block layout. And uh, those actually won't look good unless you're going, unless your main roads line up and are straight across, like just like a plus sign, like from, you know, the very eastern to the to the western side, you know, uh, three o'clock to nine o'clock and, and 12 o'clock to six o'clock. That's what they would have to go. Otherwise, if it's if it's twisted a little bit, uh, the, 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 the road network will play a trick on your eyes and it's kind of going to be an isometric look to things. And so the buildings, because they're top down, straight top down buildings, um, it's just not going to look right because of that trick on your eyes. So I always uh, go haphazard or branching um, with those two algorithms, unless I'm, I know that I'm going for that other city block look and I, I'm going to make things line up. Dense buildings, another thing that a lot of people like to have on. Uh, this is going to just put all the buildings tightly together uh, if they're near the city center. And then what's your population? What are you going for? So I'm picking 5,000 here. Um, that's actually a limit in, in the free version. In the pro version, you can pick higher numbers. Um, but uh, the, this is actually only going to create about 1,300 buildings. It's, it's dividing it by four, and then it's adding another, a, a few other buildings back into the mix as it, as it goes through its algorithm uh, for, you know, there's uh, there's one tavern for every so many um, people, and there's one of these buildings for every so many people. So that's going to add in a, a, a 50 or 80 more uh, buildings. So I think that that covers the big picture. Of all this, not going over quite all of them, um, but but. Clear.
close to it. Uh, hopefully you can read the rest or, or experiment. You know, that's the great thing. You can see that it's going to generate the map very quickly. So this is a great way to experiment, play with the, the settings if you want to. Um, so you can see how I put the coastline. This is from your 12 o'clock to your roughly 5 o'clock position over on the other side here. And it's going through creating uh, 1,322 buildings. That's the, the most time-consuming part of it. And if you've got, if you've got a, a large population size and if you uh, have a relatively small map area, this can take a, a long time to, to, to place all the buildings. Uh, if you also, if the larger your coastline is, the less land there is so therefore you're going to have less um, or it's going to take longer to go because it's going to try to be placing those buildings and it's doing a lot of math in the background to you know pick a, a, a street segment and then once it picks a street segment let's uh, can we put a building there make sure we're not overlapping any other existing building or any other uh, any other feature on the map at that location and then um, you know, make sure that we twist that building each time to match up with the with the the road. Uh, so it's doing all of that math each time. This looks a little busy at the moment. I'm going to turn off numbers because that's going to make it look a little bit less dense there. Um, and uh, it looks like we've got select shape on. That's why you're seeing all of these dots on the lines. Um, feature labels. Uh, so feature labels on the city maps are corresponding to the sector, if you will, of the uh, map where that building is located. So imagine like up here, we're going to have things that are like A, B. So uh, imagine that the top of the map is divided up into 26 sections, A through Z, and the side of the map is also 26 sections, A, to, A through Z. So A, B, 1 is going to be up here in the corner. Um, whereas down here, we're going to end up with something like AW2. Uh, so that's the second building placed in that particular sector. This is AW1, so that's another building that was placed there. As I said before, this is the generate menu with all those things. So if we were going with a blank map and going step by step, you could come up to the generate menu and kind of do these in order. If you want a coast, do the generate coast. If you want a river, do generate river. Um, and the advantage there is that you can tweak that prior step. You can undo and redo the river if you don't like the way it was placed, or you can actually, it's just a shape, just like the coastline, both are just shapes. So you can, you can select that shape and you can tweak that shape before you put down the main roads, for example. Um, especially useful for your streets. You know, you can get your streets all worked out. And like here, we've got a, a, a couple of streets that just don't make any sense. Why would you have this little street here when you, when, you know, it's not really adding any value right there. So um, with the shapes, like I, right now, I can go ahead and I hit select and I can then select that shape, delete it, and it's gone. You know, and likewise, I could do that with some of these others. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this short and not do too much. But then I do that, and I go into the features, likewise, and I can go here now. Now, our features, because we're looking at a city map, it, it's kind of pre presetting this to look at the structures. You can, though, pull up all the other things, too. So you can pull up vegetation as well, so you can add in the more, more trees if you want to and so forth. Anyway, what I was going to do was I can select this one, and then I can rotate it a little bit. And if I want it to be, like, on this street here, there, I've done that, and uh, you know I can pull this one down if I want to, and so forth. I can I can move everything around. Uh, I can change up these things. Like uh, like the tool comes built in with a few uh, map icon, a few different styles of map icons. But if I want to focus in on medieval, for example, I can just partially type that in. And this one here happens to be like a medicine thing or something, a medium office, excuse me. So that's why that that fit that search criteria. But you get the idea. If I th this will this will help me filter in uh, on, on just the medieval looking buildings um, here if I want to. What I can do though is again with notes. I can pull up notes of the selected and that's going to give me the details. This is just a regular house but uh, the, the generator actually generates some information about each building for that, that, that gets placed onto the map. And in the case of most buildings like houses it's just going to be who lives there. Um, and this is all fully editable. You can add some more information. You can tweak these if you want to. Um, I can also, though, show all the notes. And I can come over here to add edit view note. And I can click on any building. You know, I can go over here. This is a little bit different, maybe a shop or something. So here we have a butcher. And here's the staff of who works there. And you've got that there. Um, the other nice thing about this, though, is I can I can focus in uh, with this filter. I can actually say, hey, you know, show me just the taverns, if I can type. There. 
So I type in tavern and then just the taverns that have been added to the map. So I got one there and there's probably a handful of others. If I zoom in a little bit, there's uh, or pan around. So there's a second one and uh, so it might be just the two or three. Um, so I can then click on this since I've got added at view selected there and I can pull that up and I can see everything that they have. Here's the drinks that are available, food, patrons, staff, all generated uh, from data that we've got built into the tool, all fully editable. If you want to change that with the pro version, again, so like I said, we just hold back these power user features where if you get really into the tool and you really want to tweak everything around, you can do that. Um, that comes through these configure menus, uh, particularly this, the, these last two, in particular in this case for the settlement data. So we pull this up. And this just drives um, uh, which, what, which buildings are added to the to the town, um, and there's a more detailed video on all of that. Uh, so I'm just going to show you where it was, and you know, uh, um, uh, look for the the video that we've done on on that. And then building details. So, so you know, if we want to look at that tavern stuff, uh, so this this is what drives what's available and who works in the tavern. So uh, we've got a number of patrons and we've got at least two groups of patrons and maybe 10 groups of patrons and one to 10 groups or one to 10 people per group and the chance that they're an adventure and so forth. Um, same thing, so similar things rather for uh, what, what drinks are available um, are all here. And this is all something that you can, you know, say you can add and change and then save it and then reload it later. Uh, so that's all there for you to uh, explore. Um, likewise, really quickly, uh, if you want to add custom terrain features and textures, you can do that here. This will let you add them uh, one at a time or, or a few at a time within a folder, for example. Configure will bring up dialogues that allow you to configure specific terrain. You know, each piece of terrain is a row and you've got some settings for them. Um, your configuration folder you can set up a configuration folder and and then you can just drop icons in a, in a folder structure again these are advanced instructions that we have out on our website um, but you can then uh, once they're in a, in a set uh, in, a, in a particular folder structure they'll be automatically added to worldographer every time you you open it although to be fair um, if you put too many icons in there, you end up blowing the, the uh, amount of memory that the tool requires. And you might be better off doing this, and I'll show this real briefly, add configuration subfolders. So we run a Patreon where we provide uh, new icons each month, and so um, via that I've set up Mayan uh, through these configuration folders. So for example, in 2021, uh, right now we're towards the end of 2022, or I mean, towards the end of the second month of 2021. So we've got these two folders and I can expand these and these are the icons that we had done. And I can just check, you know, if I'm working with gnomes and I'm doing a classic world map with gnomes, the next time I can, I can just check that. Um, or if um, uh, I'm doing something uh, with uh, magic stuff and it's a battle mat, I can pull up this one, but then I can remember, hey, back in 2019, we did some other wizard stuff, battle mat, wizard tower battle mat stuff. So let me also, also do that one. Um, so we can uh, 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 quickly add, you know, all the icons that are related to a particular uh, theme map that you're doing. Uh, if you if you kind of set up a folder structure for it, and again, we've got that on, on our website. Um, let's see. So yeah, adding buildings. I think I if I didn't add a building to the map, let me go ahead and just do that here. I know I moved some around. Um, so just click it there and then you can select it and then you can, you know, just move it around or or actually turn it if you need to um, and pull up the notes of the selected and all that stuff. All that functionality is there that I've shown. Uh, these lines are all just shapes and I showed you deleting one and you, you can imagine if you click the points of the shape, once you've got it selected, you can you can move it around and that sort of thing. So that's uh, that's that functionality. I think my last uh, thing to do then is just to show the battle mat stuff for real briefly. So I'm going to pull up new battle mat dungeon map. Um, and we've got, uh, again, so this is information that's similar to what we've done on, on uh, prior to this video, or prior in this video. We also have a number of generators, though, for different types of buildings, uh, as well as a couple of dungeon generators. Um, let me do this dungeon. This is the more recent dungeon generator, which will give you uh, a number of 20 by 20 sections 
um, and you can exclude or require certain sections or, or exclude certain sections. Uh, set up what the textures are for it and set a random seed in case if you want to try the same one again just jot this down beforehand and and then you could be able to generate the same thing with the same build of the tool once we once there's a new build out if we've changed uh, some of the some of the sections then it wouldn't um, wouldn't be the same result but uh, but but with a particular release it would be the same so hit generate and you're going to see that we've got a, a big dungeon that's been generated and and uh, you know we've um, uh, populated it with some things so here you've got some cells that just have some straw mats for example and here you've got some living quarters that are uh, richer um, and so forth all of these are just um, uh, just features for all these uh, things and just like with the city icons on the other maps or the or the um, build it, buildings on the on the settlement map uh, just click one and you can move it around you can rotate it uh, with the with the controls all that functionality is, is is the same that's why it's nice that once you once you've learned the tool for one type of map a lot of that carries over the, for the other types of maps these buildings are just um, uh, the, the walls are and floors are just shapes they're they're polygons with uh, a fill type and, and a wall type or a line type stroke type I guess I should say um, so that's how all of this was created and you can edit that if you want to or use it as is your choice um, I think maybe a little bit more practical though are the other types of, of things um, because for that I think you might want to make your own dungeon of a particular style um, but if you just want to you know the players are going to to a new house and and you know you want to come up with hey they're visiting an NPC and what's his house look like well I can just make a, a, a little map of a house generate it and it's going to give me something like this and likewise everything is are just features and shapes um, for this type of thing um, I can do another one and so if we want to generate a house again we're probably going to get so this is a one-story version of something different so there's actually um, four or five different layouts um, and then they all have variations where they can be a little bit more taller a little bit wider stuff like that for those uh, for those different layouts um, and then lastly I'll just show you one more of those so if we go here to uh, generate a uh, tavern for example Generate the tavern. Um, uh, yeah, I should. I um, uh, uh, lost my train of thought there. But uh, yeah, let's generate our tavern. And so here we've created this tavern. Uh, this is the most re one of the one of the more recent things that we added to the tool. This was done uh, based on votes from our Patreon. I, I think I said that we had a Patreon going for new map icons. We also let people vote for what new functionality to add to the tool. So one of those from a couple months ago was to uh, make, a, make a couple of new generators for a couple of new building types. And so we did uh, a new tavern generator. So you've got you know a main room with several um, uh, several tables you got a stage area now you know it's a generator so it's not going to be perfect so I might you know pick these things and drag them over um, uh, uh, dra drag them around a little bit so that it's not maybe right up next to the stage um, and uh, here you've got a kitchen area and a pantry area and a couple of private side rooms that's basically the, the, the layout in that case um, and and um, you know, most of the layouts for the tavern have a similar thing, but they, they can be all over the place. They, the, the side rooms can be on the opposite walls or, or whatever the case might be. You might not have a pantry. You might have an owner's room. Um, so there's different. There's actually quite a bit. In the, since that's one of the more recent ones that we added, there's actually quite a bit of flexibility in that particular one. Um, let me just pull this off so you can see more of the battle mat icons. So built in the tool, we have all of this for you. Um, as far as battle mat icons go, tokens. Uh, so uh, I think that that's a pretty comprehensive, uh, maybe a little bit more than a basic look at the tool. There's still a ton of things that we didn't get into. Um, I'm going to try to get back to making these videos. This is the first one in a few months, um, but we were pretty busy adding new functionality to the tool. Uh, I've been working on a lot of new blog posts. Uh, I've been doing a bit daily blog post where we've been doing daily maps or daily adventure ideas or things along those lines. So there's a lot going on. Um, but we're definitely going to be doing, you know, more maps. We're working on new functionality in Worldographer uh, all the time. Uh, like I said, every month we're taking votes for new features to add to the tool uh, through Patreon there. That's patreon.com slash inkwellideas. 
and I think that that is a uh, I hope that's a really good comprehensive look at the tool and uh, again thank you for your support and uh, have a great day I hope you're able to make the uh, make some really great maps with the, this uh, software thanks <laughs>